Hello. So, not that long ago, the GURPS Game Assistant or GURPS Game Aid, uh, I don't actually know the proper name, uh, got updated and a new with 1.0 alpha version came out. It's completely different. So, let's check it out by trying a small combat example. Since this is a, an entirely different uh, system module for Foundry, I basically had to... Uh, I lost everything. So I had to make a new combat arena. And the, the most important part uh, now is that you can import GCS files into Foundry and everything works basically the same as in GCS. You can add stuff, you can edit stuff, everything gets recalculated. And you can even, uh, for example, change the damage progression, uh, which is very nice because uh, most of my GCS sheets are made with uh, no school Grognar damage in mind. And uh, this makes them more universal. Uh, and now you do not have to when you are playing an actual game, import your character, then something happens, you have to edit the GCS file, then re-import it again. Uh, this is much, much easier. And uh, it's a shame that I won't be able to play in Foundry much nowadays. I mean, in the nearest future. So let's uh, have a ninja fight an orc axeman. By the way, to import a character sheet in this version of GURPS Game Assistant, or I don't know the name, you have to use the uh, last version of GCS. Old sheets are not supported. Uh, so we'll have a, an Orc Axeman, who is uh, relatively strong. He has some armor, a shield and an axe also a knife as a backup weapon and the human ninja who is not very strong but he is dexterous and has uh, higher skill levels uh, he is wielding a kusari jutte a double weapon let's uh, determine uh, the starting positions ninja is starting on Spawn point number 5 and orc on spawn point number 6. Uh, where is 5? Got it. So the ninja, I think he goes first because his basic speed is much higher. Uh, 7 compared to 5.25 of the orc. So he starts with his Kusari Jutte wield it in the following way. The Jutte part is in the left hand and the Kosari part is in the right hand at reach 2. Uh, because reach is important uh, when the Kosaris are concerned. Uh, he is fast, so he moves 7 yards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then the Orc moves uh, how many yards? Uh, five yards. This is a gentle slope. It uh, uh, increased the movement point cost by one half per hex. So that's uh, one, uh, two and a half, four, and that's it. Cannot move any further. Okay, the ninja moves again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he cannot enter this hex because that's a, a difficult terrain. Uh, one and a half, three, four and a half. So that's uh, two movement points, four movement points, six movement points. The ninja goes through the dense vegetation. Then the orc goes one point half, three, 
or point half. No, orc is not that stupid. He will go this way. He will stop here. Uh, because uh, he might be able to benefit from the increased elevation. However, since this is a gentle slope, uh, to benefit from uh, combat at different levels, uh, the distance must be two hexes apart. So it, it isn't actually that important. So the ninja, he goes out and swings his kusari to... He tries to entangle the foot or the leg of the orc. Since he is at reach 2 right now, he can do that. So he will row against entangle uh, minus 2 to hit the leg. That's minus 2 and let's row against entangle. And of course he fails. Uh, his whip is under, I mean not whip, Kusari is now unraided. So the orc steps in and swings with his axe at the ninja, just at the torso, an unaimed blow. Uh, let's see, where is it? He rolls against 12 and also misses. Uh, the ninja takes a step back and radius his kusari at uh, reach 1. The orc pushes him further and swings his axe again. Now he succeeds. The ninja can parry. Uh, and since he is using a jutte to parry, uh, that's actually a fencing parry. And also he may be able to disarm the orc on, on the next turn if he parries successfully. Let's see, he will not retreat. Yes, he parries successfully and now uh, the axe is sort of trapped uh, between the main part of the jute and the tine. You know what it looks like. In case you don't, uh, let me draw it for you. Uh, that's the main part of the weapon and there is a tine that traps the blades. Okay. Now, uh, that's the ninja's turn. Uh, he opts to disarm. Uh, unfortunately, he does not have the disarming uh, skill. If I recall things correctly, it's simply a quick contest of uh, uh, weapon skills, right? Against strength. So let's uh, roll against Jitte Sai. That's uh, uh, margin of success zero. And this. So he fails to disarm the orc. And now it's the orc's turn again. Uh, can the orc do anything interesting? Hmm. I don't think so. Uh, the orc, he can do, I think, an, a committed attack against the ninja's uh, leg, for example. Uh, committed, uh, determined. So that's plus 2 for that. And minus 2 for the leg. So he rolls against 12 and he hits. The ninja will try to trap the blade again, he succeeds, and now he will try to disarm on his own turn. He, wow, he makes it by 8. And the orc uh, fails. And that's... Uh, I don't recall the rules exactly, but I think the success by 0, 1 and 2 means that the weapon is unready, but this is a huge win by 4, so the weapon is actually dropped. So the orc is not an axeman anymore. Here's the axe. 
What does the orc do? Uh, he still has a shield, and the shield is a very good weapon, uh, to be honest. Uh, you can bash with the shield, so he will do just that. He succeeds. Uh, you cannot trap a shield with a jute, that would be stupid. Uh, but you can still parry. Uh, however, how much does the shield weigh? The shield is... Uh, where is the weight? 7 pounds. Well, the jute is only... 0? What? Ah, I mean 3 pounds. So, it will not break. You can try to parry it. That's a critical success. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, what will the orc do? He will take a step back and uh, take out the knife. That's a ready maneuver. Uh, then the ninja will take a step forward and use his Kusari to entangle the leg again. Uh, that's minus two. And entangle. He succeeds. Uh, the orc axeman will try to block it. Uh, that's... Uh, where is his block? There it is. 11. But he blocks at minus two. Uh, because uh, that's a Kusari. And he fails, so now his leg is entangled. And he must make an immediate dexterity roll to remain standing. And he fails. So now he... He's... Uh, why doesn't it work? Okay, let's do it here. Damn it! Okay, there it is. He's prone and probably in the following way. On his own turn, the orc uh, actually cannot get up until he frees himself. He must make a, a quick contest of strength to try to get out. Uh, he rolls against ST13, makes it by 5, and the ninja makes his roll by 7, so he's still entangled. Now the ninja he steps in. Uh, since uh, his kusari now is not taught, uh, it is treated as a limp weapon. It still uh, entangles the victim. Uh, but uh, he will not make any quick contest of strength. So instead, he will elect to stab with the jute. Uh, the jute is actually a crushing weapon. Uh, or stab or swing. Swinging is better, isn't it? And he will swing right at the face. Uh, so let's do it. Uh, he'll do that as an all-out attack. Uh, let me open the modifiers. I haven't even checked them. Yeah, they look a little bit different. All-out attack determined against the face. Let's check the hit location. Face. So he swings his jute. He Makes it, and the orc will, will try to block. However, since he is on the ground, uh, he will be blocking at minus four. Uh, he rolls his block, and he succeeds. Wow, that's impressive. So the jute actually hits uh, the shield squarely, but uh, I will not bother with shield damage in this example. Uh, 
what will the orc do since he is uh, opponent is right now defenseless after an all-out attack uh, can he bash him with a shield he can at least he can try uh, so let's another hand he has a knife what would be better let's check uh, the knife damage it's impaling but his skill is quite poor he doesn't even have the I oh, wait that's a throwing swing thrust uh, let's do the proper thing and have the orc make a telegraphic stab telegraphic stab uh, let's uh, do the posture thing minus four to hit he oh there are some modifiers right here i could use that's very nice i didn't know that so telegraphic uh, it then uh, equalizes the chances and let's also make it an all-out attack against the Gregorian. why not it's the orc he doesn't fight fair and square where is the groin there you go so he'll roll at plus one at a net bonus stab he succeeds rolls two impaling damage the ninja he doesn't have any armor especially uh, on his groin so he'll take uh, how do I do that? Like this? Yep. Uh, so he's very shocked right now. His shock penalty is minus four. Uh, what will the ninja do? Uh, okay, let's think. Uh, the ninja will just... Uh, do an all-out defense uh, increased parry uh, the orc will shield bash him uh, let's use these current modifiers minus four uh, for a line down and now let's uh, bash him bash his leg That's minus six. That's a pretty poor chance. So let's uh, let's not uh, do the leg thing and just oh he fails anyway. The ninja. What will he do? Uh, the ninja will step in. Speaking of all this. When you are using the shield prone, uh, where is your shield? Is it in your head hex or in your legs hex? Because that's important. Even though you, when the ninja is in, the, in this hex, uh, can you even use the shield to bash him? Because is this uh, close combat or is that uh, one yard of distance? It's unclear, but uh, I will treat this situation is totally, definitely, completely close combat. So the shield cannot even be used here. Uh, it even penalizes everything. Now the ninja will do it again. He will do an uh, all-out attack. Determined against the face of the orc. He swings his uh, jutte. The orc cannot block. Cannot block at all. Uh, so he will try to parry at least. Uh, his parry will be at uh, minus 4 for lying down. Wait. 
Is it minus 4? That's minus 3, isn't it? I think it is. And he fails. So now we roll 5 damage. That's quite a hefty hit at the face. Okay. Let me see. 8 HP now, and the orc has to roll against health to avoid uh, getting knocked out. And of course, uh, he stays awake. However, he still experiences uh, a lot of shock, so he will uh, just do an all out defense increased parry. The ninja will do another attack at the face. Uh, Wink makes it. Uh, the orc will try to defend, so he rolls against at minus 3 and plus 2 for all out defense. He tries to parry, but again fails miserably. So let's roll 1d, another 5 damage. That's quite a beating. Uh, he's reeling now. See, there are status effects here. That's cool. And he's still awake. Oh boy. Uh, will the orc do anything? The orc gets very desperate. Despite uh, experiencing shock. That's a minus 4. He does an all-out attack. Uh, attacks are at minus 4 for being prone. And he does it as a telegraphic attack to remove all the penalties. And he just stabs. Uh, he tries to stab the ninja. But he misses. And since he is completely defenseless right now, Oh, I forgot to impose a minus 2 penalty for the shield in close combat. The ninja just swings at his face as, an, uh, as a telegraphic attack against the face and he'll do it as an all-out strong attack. Oh, he missed by one, but that still hits the torso. Uh, so let's roll damage. And uh, that's uh, 1d plus 2. 3. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. It doesn't even uh, penetrate the DR. So the orc now has no shock penalty. So he'll do it again. Determined, telegraphic, lying down. He stabs. Uh, where should he stab? He's at plus 4 right now. Oh, I mean also minus 2 for, uh, for the shield. He will just stab the torso. Uh, let's do it. He makes it here. Uh, let's roll damage. Why doesn't it work? I don't know. Two points of damage, but uh, does it hit the vitals? That's important. It does not. But two points of impaling damage is, uh, is still quite a lot. Wait, I forgot to use the wounding multiplier in that groin attack, so that should have been four points of injury and four more so both of them now are reeling uh, that's honestly quite an uh, quite a stupid fight <laughs> a ninja he wants to finish him off so let's all out determined attack minus four shock minus five face swing makes it 
rolls six crushing damage. Uh, his face is pulverized. It's uh, minus three right now. And he rolls against uh, 12 to. Uh, he is stunned, and we can. Uh, we can call it call it a day and uh, declare the ninja the winner so we got to try out this new uh, GURPS uh, module for foundry i think it's very good it's uh, much better than uh, the previous version and that one was very good and this one is even better and we also got to try out some Kusari rolls and the uh, Jitte rolls uh, that deal with disarming. So that's pretty neat. So thank you for watching. I will see you next time.